So from the 1993 ENM multiple choice test, this is number 42. <clears throat> and the problem says, a large parallel plate capacitor is being charged, and the magnitude of the electric field between the plates of the capacitor is increasing at a rate of dE dt. Which of the following statements is correct about the magnetic field in the region between the plates of the charging capacitor? So, and here are your options right here. We'll go over those options in a minute, but let's visualize what's happening. Let's draw a capacitor. Here's your, your plates. Now, dE dt, that's the, uh, the, the electric field strength. So, what's happening is that the field is increasing at dE dt. We don't really know what that is, but we know that the electric field is increasing in intensity at some rate. So, which means that I'm adding charge to this plate at a certain rate, which means that there is a current flowing into this capacitor. And, um, and so, and also therefore there is an increasing rate of electric flux within that capacitor. And so we want to use um, uh, Ampere's Maxwell's law, which says um, B dot ds equals mu naught i plus mu naught times epsilon naught times d, uh, d phi dt, where phi is the electric flux. Now. <clears throat> This is the big idea. You know, if I'm going to add a big idea to this, you know, this, the Ampere's Maxwell's law, you, you, you need to memorize that. That's one of all of Maxwell's equations for E and M. You should memorize them and really kind of understand what they mean. I mean, you should understand what they mean. Um, and I mean, the last thing that I want you looking at before you take the E and M test are Maxwell's equations. Uh, you know, just to, to memorize them, make sure you know what, what they mean. So, now look, this is the current. This I is the current flowing in here, which is, a, so this is the equivalent of the current, the rate of change of magnetic flux. But you know uh, that uh, uh, this right here, the uh, electric flux, um, electric flux is E uh, times uh, dotted with A. So now A is staying a constant here. So if you take the time derivative of this, uh, the area is going to stay constant. We'll just put it out there. And this is dE dt. OK. And <clears throat> so what's, what we're, we're and, and if you look at this equation, if we just substitute that in for this, you think, OK, look, B is going to be um, directly proportional because look we're just going to get rid of this term the look at this equation if you were to double the edt all other things being held uh, equal you're going to double the strength of the magnetic field induced by the changing electric flux and therefore if we look at the answers the options that we have First of all, let's take a look at A. It said A, um, which of the following statements is correct about the magnetic field in the region between the plates of the charging capacitor? It says A, it is parallel to the electric field. Is the, is the induced magnetic field ever parallel? No, it's perpendicular. You know, so no. So A is just wrong. B, its magnitude is directly proportional to dE dt. And that's what I just showed right there. So B is the correct answer. And uh, C, its magnitude is inversely proportional. No, that's just, if, if B is correct, C has to be wrong. Nothing about the field can be determined unless the charging current is known. Well, uh, there's nothing in here about the charging current. Actually, you can figure out what the current is. I think if you, if you well, you'd have to know what the area of the capacitor is, but um, or the area, um, yeah. 
And then E, nothing about the field can be determined unless the instantaneous electric field uh, is known. Uh, no, you need, just need to know the rate of change of the electric field. So uh, by using um, uh, Ampere's Maxwell's law and understanding that this phi here, this electric, this amount of electric flux has, um, is equal to dE dt times A, you can see that, okay, the B is going to be directly proportional to this. And that's why the answer is B. Okay. So, any questions on number 42? Does that make sense? So what do you have to memorize? Ampere's Maxwell's laws are all the, all, all of Maxwell's equations. And you have to kind of understand what they mean, what they're, you know, conceptually, as well as just have the equation memorized. And it's hard. So good luck. That is all.